What is going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wraparound. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action for you going down on Thursday, January 11th, 2024. If you like this content, make sure you smash that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We just passed 100 million views here on our YouTube channel. We would not have been able to do that without your guys' love and support. So thank you so much for that. Um, the wraparound definitely wouldn't be what it is today without your without you guys as well. You guys are the ones we do this for. All of our videos, our daily content, our live shows. So again, thank you so much for all of that support and all those likes. Um, if you're looking for my best bets on the board, the games that I absolutely love, the ones that I love the most, make sure you're heading over to pickdogs.com. Click the premium picks tab at the top of the page. i got plenty of action on the board today. got a handful of NHL plays on the premium side that I love. Um, got some college hoops. Got a nice, a decent-sized college hoops card. Some NBA on the board as well. I said there's something for everybody. Now, the best way to go, check out a long-term pass, whether that's with, just with me or you pair me up with one of the other fantastic handicappers or multiple of the, uh, the fantastic handicappers at Pick Dogs as part of our multi-capper promotion. You can get a daily pass and then parlay those winnings up as we uh, – as we start to move into another loaded weekend. Or like I said, the, the longer term you go, the cheaper the plays become. Sometimes they even become pennies per pick if you go with one of those yearly passes. So definitely something that you want to make sure that you guys check out. But that's that's down the road. Today, we got a 13-game card to look at from the NHL. Kind of makes some cold, hard cash. Colder hard cash. It's uh, colder and harder than the ice these guys skate on. Am I right? Anyways, you guys know the drill. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. Our first game on Thursday's card takes us to the Key Bank Center where the Buffalo Sabres take on the Ottawa Senators. And, you know, the Buffalo Sabres, they've been inconsistent. You know, they've, they've split their last uh, their last eight games and they're coming off a 5-2 loss at home to the, to the Seattle Kraken. But the one thing that the Ottawa Senators have done consistently as of late is lose hockey games. You know, this is going to be the fifth game of their road trip, the final game of their road trip, and it's a weird one at that, you know. They go on a four-game West Coast road trip to start 2024, and now they have an East Coast game in Buffalo before they head back home for a homestand. It's just, it's odd, but it um, doesn't change the fact that, you know, Ottawa has been far less effective on the road this season. They're a 500 team at home, but they're just 4-12 and 12 on the road. It's a 25% win percentage. I'm not taking it. I'm not getting enough plus money to even consider the Ottawa Senators in this spot, you know. I think the Buffalo Sabres right now are the better team, and uh, they're the more trustworthy team in this spot. So give me the uh, give me the Buffalo Sabres on the money line in this one. Now we head to the PNC Arena where the Carolina Hurricanes take on the Anaheim Ducks, and another team that really just can't find their footing home, really home or away, is the Anaheim Ducks right now. You know, sure they're coming off a five-three win on the road over the Nashville Predators last time out. It was a nice win, but prior to that, they had lost five straight. And goal scoring is still a concern for me with this Anaheim Ducks team. Every every team's gonna you know gonna get a, a solid performance here and there. But, you know, that goes back to that old adage of a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. But more often than not, Anaheim's struggling to score. Two goals or less scored in seven of their last nine games. The Carolina Hurricanes are coming off a loss to the St. Louis Blues. Two to one, snapped a five-game win streak. But this is a Carolina Hurricanes team that has still been rock solid defensively in uh, in a lot of their recent games. Giving up two goals or less in uh, five, uh, excuse me, four straight and five of six. And I just trust him to get the job done here. I'm going to take the Carolina Hurricanes on the puck line in this one to, to beat up on the Ducks. Now we head to the Little Caesars Arena where the Detroit Red Wings take on the Edmonton Oilers. And right now it's just all about, for me, not stepping in front of this Edmonton Oilers team. You know, they've won eight straight games coming into this one. And they're doing it, with, you know, by all different ways right now. They're doing it with offense. They're doing it all the time with defense. I mean, over the course of this eight-game win streak, they've allowed two goals or less in each of their last six, three goals or less in all eight games, which is something that I never thought we'd catch ourselves saying about the Edmonton Oilers. The Detroit Red Wings are playing some solid hockey right now as well. They've won three straight and four of five. Um, but the thing for me is that, you know, those those games did come on the road, and the, team, the California teams, for the most part, aren't strong this season. I mean, the Anaheim Ducks, weak. The San Jose Sharks, terrible. The the LA Kings, while well, I'm not taking it away from the Detroit Red Wings, it's a solid win over a solid uh, Kings team. They're in the middle, they're mired in, the, in a big losing slump right now. And now you welcome a red hot Edmonton team to town. I know Edmonton back out on the road, and you know it's it's, a, it's going on the road is never easy a, an easy thing to do. But the Oilers are just playing really well right now. I think they get the job done in regulation. I'm going to take the Oilers to win this one within 60 minutes at minus 110. 
Now we head to the Amarant Bank Arena where the Florida Panthers take on the Los Angeles Kings. And like I just alluded to earlier uh, in the, the Detroit Red Wings game, this, the Los Angeles Kings are mired in a slump right now. It's hard to explain. I mean, the Kings, maybe, the, maybe they're just running out of gas and kind of coming back down to earth after that strong start to the year. But they've lost six straight. They've lost three straight on the road in that stretch. And, uh, you know, now 13-3-2 after a strong start to the year. Now 13-3-2, really not, not that bad. I mean, it's pretty good, actually. But they're going up against a Florida Panthers team that has won eight straight. They've allowed three goals or less in seven of those eight games, two goals or less in six of the eight. And while you may look at this game and say, oh, my, only minus 140 for a team that's won eight straight against a team that's lost six in a row, I think Flo I think uh, LA is still getting that respect for that road record that they have so far this season. And I think that's just creating a discount on the Florida Panthers. We're just playing the much better hockey right now. So I'm going to take the Florida Panthers on the money line in this one. Now we head to the Bell Center where the Montreal Canadiens take on the San Jose Sharks. And it continues for the Sharks. The losing streak still in double digits after a 7-1 uh, loss to the hands of the Toronto Maple Leafs getting swept in the home-and-home -home by a combined scoreline of 11-2. Now that has San Jose at 9-29-3 on the year. Easily the worst team in hockey. 3-17-1 on the road. And just when you thought maybe San Jose a while ago was maybe turning the corner and playing some decent enough hockey where maybe they'd be up to, uh, to, to you know, starting to right the ship on the road. Well, it hasn't worked out since then. And now we're looking at a, uh, let me do some quick counting here, 12-game losing streak. Um, of those 12 games, the, uh, the San Jose Sharks have scored two goals or less in 10 of them. And um, it's just, it hasn't been a good look. The Montreal Canadiens are far from a world beater. I am not going to just, I'm not going to flat out lie and say that they're a really good hockey team because they're not a great hockey team. They're decent. They've got some talent, but they're not great, but they're good enough here. They're still 17 and 17 and six on the year, uh, eight, 10 and two at home. Um, they play their better hockey at home. And I just think they get the job done here. For me, it's just all about taking a team to fade the Sharks at a decent price. So give me the Montreal Canadiens at minus 152. Now we head to the PPG Paints Arena for a matchup between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Vancouver Canucks. And a matchup between two teams that are playing some solid hockey right now. Both are 7-2-1 in their last 10 games. Vancouver coming off of a 5-2 win over the New York Islanders last time out. And now they've looked really good on the course, excuse me, over the course of this East Coast road trip. Um, they've outscored the Devils, the Rangers, and the Islanders by a combined score of 17-9. Pittsburgh playing some solid hockey as well. Winners of five of their last seven. But to me, this just boils down to the fact that you got two teams that are playing similar hockey. Uh, both, like I said, both playing one of their last 10 games. Vancouver, the slightly better record on the road compared to Pittsburgh's record at home. I got it. And, you know, like I said, it's it's an even match. I think you're splitting hairs. But to me, the value is on the Canucks. You're getting a decent amount of plus money on the take back. So give me the Canucks here at plus 115. Now we head to the Emily Arena where the Tampa Bay Lightning take on the New Jersey Devils. And, um, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning back home where they play their best hockey. And they've been they've been starting to pick it up a little bit. You know, they took down the, uh, the Los Angeles Kings last time out. It took a little bit of work, but they've got the job done. Now they've alternated wins and losses in each of their last six games. The New Jersey Devils, you know, they've won five of their last seven. But here's the thing for me. I like this this Lightning team at home. Like I said, these two teams are actually fairly even. You know, the, the Devils are 12-6 and six on the road. The Lightning, 12-5-3 and three at home. But I'm still concerned about the New Jersey Devils and the amount of goals that they're giving up. I mean, you know, sure, you had the 4-2 win over the Chicago Blackhawks, and that's all well and good. But from what it looks like right now, the New Jersey Devils, when they play a team with a pulse, they give up some goals. They're giving up six to the Vancouver Canucks. They gave up five to the Boston Bruins. Gave up six to Edmonton. So... I think they're going to give up a few here against Tampa Bay, who we can't forget still has that lethal power play. They still got one of the best goaltenders in the world, Andre Vasilevsky. And I think this is just a reasonable price for the Tampa Bay Lightning, considering how well they play at home. So give me the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning on the money line in this one. Now we head to the Capital One Arena where the Washington Capitals host the Seattle Kraken and uh, should be another pretty solid matchup but once again it's another team that's just flat out on a roll that i'm just not interested in stepping in front of right now and that's 
crazy as it is to say, the Seattle Kraken, they've allowed two goals or less in each of the seven games during this current win streak that they're on. And, you know, the Washington Capitals continue to be inconsistent. And that when they are consistent, well, they're consistently losing. They've lost six of their last eight games. They got a nice win over the Los Angeles Kings last time out. But it doesn't really move the needle for me right now. The Seattle Kraken are just, they're playing well. And I think that there's a reason that they're favored on the road in this spot. You know, even at, or even if you're getting them at a, at a coin flip price, I still think it's a great value on the Kraken here. So give me Seattle at, on the money line in this one. Now we head to the UBS Arena where the New York Islanders take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, you know, the New York Islanders, another one of those teams that just continue to run hot and cold. Um, right now, they're in a, they're mired in a little bit of a slump, uh, you know, just playing inconsistent hockey. You know, they've dropped four of their last five games, lost back-to-back -back games by a final score of 5-2. to two. And what's concerning for me with the Islanders is that we've talked about it before. They've sort of regressed back into that lower scoring style where they're trying to rely on defense to win a lot of games, but... Right now, the defense is holding up in each of their last three losses. The New York Islanders have given up five goals. They've given up four or more goals in uh, five of their last eight. And uh, they're just struggling right now. And against the Toronto team, it's started to find themselves. They've won four in a row, granted against some lesser opposition. We talked about the the Carolina road, excuse me, the, uh, the Carolina, the, Cat, the California road trip earlier, you know, against LA, Anaheim, and San Jose. Well, Toronto just swept San Jose 11 to 2 in the home and home. I think Toronto playing with some confidence right now. We know the offensive uh, potential of this Toronto Maple Leafs team. I think they get the job done on the road here. I'm going to take the Toronto Maple Leafs on the money line in this one. Now we head to the Enterprise Center where the St. Louis Blues take on the New York Rangers. And uh, this should be a pretty good matchup here. The St. Louis Blues, you know, they're playing their best hockey at home this season. They're 12-7 and seven on home ice. Um... You know, they've won back uh, two of their last three games. They're coming off a 5-1 loss to the Florida Panthers. But my concern with the St. Louis Blues has been what it's been since the Christmas break. This team is struggling to score, and you can't always rely on your defense to get the job done. This team, this, uh, this uh, St. Louis team has scored two goals or less in all six games since the Christmas break. They have given up two or less in four of, their le four of those six. But, again, it doesn't always work like that. And the New York Rangers, they've hit a couple of bumpy patches as of late. They've given up four or more goals in three of their last four games, all losses. But we still know what this New York Rangers team is. They're a team that has fantastic goaltending. They play solid defense. And they have an offense that can hop on you at the blink of an eye. And uh, I think that's what we have here. I think the New York Rangers, I think, you know, they're favored like this on the road for a reason. You know, they have the better goaltending in my eyes and Igor Shosturkin and Jonathan Quick compared to Jordan Binnington and Joel Hofer. Um, I think the Rangers just find a way to get the job done on the road. So give me the New York Rangers at minus 154 in this one. Now we head to the Candle Life Center where the Winnipeg Jets take on the Chicago Blackhawks in the most lopsided line on Thursday's card. And uh, I think it's lopsided for good reason. I think the Winnipeg Jets, if you've heard me talk about them here on the wraparound, you know my thoughts on the Winnipeg Jets. I think they're one of the best teams in the NHL. They And they're not flashy. They don't have stars necessarily. They just have a bunch of really good players that come together and just play consistent hockey across the board. Um, you know, 14, 5, and 2 at home. 13, 4, and 2 on the road. 28, and 12 on the puck line. Winnipeg just playing some fantastic hockey. They've won seven in a row. Uh, the bulk of those coming by two goals. Chicago, oh, this is a Chicago team that continues to struggle. They've scored two goals or less in five of their last six and have lost eight of their last ten. To me, this is a complete mismatch. I'm going to Winnipeg Jets on the puck line. You might have to go to minus two and a half to get any sort of value, but just taking the Jets minus one and a half is where I'm going to be in this one. Now we head to a matchup from the Mullet Arena where the Arizona Coyotes take on the Calgary Flames and, uh, Another looks to be decent matchup on paper. Um, you know, the Arizona Coyotes this season, we know what the story is if you follow the wraparound. They play their best hockey at home, 13-8 and eight at home compared to the Calgary Flames, who are only 8-11-4 and four on the road this season. So maybe you give the edge to Arizona in that regard. But Arizona still, you know, coming off a three-game losing streak. They beat Boston. Maybe it's a nice sort of thing to turn around. But Calgary still won four of their last six and head-to-head. -head, They've won seven of the last eight meetings against the Arizona Coyotes. So rather than try to mess around with the side here, although I do lean towards Arizona in the even money, uh, I'm going to be taking a couple of different angles here. I'm going to take the over six 
uh, because I do think there's going to be some goals scored in this game. Both of these teams have been given up around three to four goals a game, and I think that the offenses can come to play. But I'm going to go with the 4-3 correct score here, and I'm going to dabble a little bit on both sides. 4-3 Calgary paying a nice plus 2,500, and 4-3 Arizona paying plus 2,200. I think that's just the way I'm going to look in this one. So the over six with the 4-3 correct score on both sides. Now we head to the T-Mobile Arena for our final game between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Boston Bruins. And uh, both these teams in dire need of a win. The Vegas Golden Knights on the second half of the back-to-back -back after being shut out by the Avs on uh, on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Boston coming in off of back-to-back -back extra time losses, losing 4-3 to Arizona on the road. Um, but, I, you know, I still think it says something that the Boston Bruins are favored on the road in this spot. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights are just flat out struggling. They've lost seven of their last nine. Uh, they've scored two goals or less in each of their five, each of their last five losses. And now you're going up against a Boston Bruins team that's not only rested, um, but they're coming into this one, you know, basically with a clear head. While I think all the pressure is on Vegas to really sort of bounce back, especially at home where they have played their better hockey this season at 12, at 14, four and two Boston has played well, pretty much wherever they've been. Uh, 12, five and five on the road, 12, three and three at home. And the road team between these two teams has won the last four meetings between the two. So I'm going to go with the Boston Bruins on the money line in this one. I just, I need to see Vegas flip the switch before I really feel comfortable about backing them. So give me Boston to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Thursday, January 11th, 2024. Again, if you like this content, smash that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell in the description of this video below. So that you can get notified when the newest and freshest content drops here at Pick Dogs. Reminder, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at PickDogs.com by clicking the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. And make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.